Hello everybody, Hawk here. So my students and anybody that's close to me knows that I love drum machines. In fact, I got my start with drum machines in the studio with a classic DMX, Oberheim DMX, and a Lin drum. Drum machine, the Lin drum 2 technically, but the Lin drum drum machine. And uh, I just fell in love with drum machines. And I've been fortunate enough to start a small collection of them here. So I wanted to talk today about choosing a drum machine, selecting a good drum machine, drum machine that's appropriate for you and for what you need to do. Uh, let me first talk a little bit about what I have here, and then we can talk a bit about uh, what you're looking for in a drum machine. So this one way back here, this is the Korg DDD5 drum machine, and uh, it's the little brother to the Korg DDD1, which uh, has more pads, more sounds, more card slots, uh, and it has uh, a sampling card option on it as well. And I like this one. This is a 1987. It doesn't have as many pads. One thing I really like about the pads on this one is that they are velocity sensitive. Uh, for this age, uh, having velocity sensitive pads, that's pretty cool. Um, it also has card slots in the back. The DDD1 has a lot more card slots available, uh, but these are the cards. And you can just pop these right into the card slot. So this is a fun one. So these ones are really inexpensive. So the DDD1 usually runs a couple hundred bucks and they generally tend to be pretty beat up. Uh, this one I got for $50 and I just needed to replace the battery on it and it works great. Uh, it does not have a bunch of individual outputs on the back, but it does have MIDI. It's 12-bit machine. The Roland 626. Uh, this is really cool because it is the update of the TR-707 and the TR-727. Uh, the 707 uh, is 1980. Let's see, this one is 1987. Yeah, 1987. This is 12-bit. So the 707 and the 727 came out before this one. And then Roland put all the drum machine sounds from the 707 and the 727 into this one and gave it individual outputs, and the ability to tune all of these, uh, all of these sounds. Really cheesy sounds. This thing has some really cheesy sounds. Again, this is 12-bit, and uh, this is the RX-5, and the RX-7, which came after this, um, has all of the sounds from all of the cartridges in it, but without uh, the individual mixers, without the individual outputs. Uh, so that's a good option. Uh, is the RX-7 if you don't want to get one of these big old beasts here. I, I like how big it is. I really like the fact that the drum machines are big. You put your hands on them um, and program them. Uh, again, that has MIDI as well. A couple of my prize 8-bit drum machines. First is the Sequential Tom, which is just a really bizarre classic drum machine. It has a place for carts, and you can get different manufacturers actually are still making carts. There are some individuals out there that are still making the cartridges for these, so you can get some extra sounds in it. Uh, it has, uh, this is 1987, it has uh, the some of the most intense MIDI capabilities uh, of a drum machine in this time period, and uh, including the ability to key switch sounds uh, from your MIDI controller keyboard, which is just really amazing, and some bizarre features such as the human feel in here, which basically changes the pitch but doesn't have swing, go figure, I don't know, but it sounds dirty and grungy, and I love it. I've got it uh, on a couple of upcoming tunes I'm looking forward to sharing. Uh, so that's that's the sequential Tom drum machine. Oh, I should mention, I got wood side panels. Whenever I can have uh, custom-made wood side panels made for my drum machines, I will do that because it just it makes them feel good. Makes me feel good. Uh, my prize possession of my collection is the... Uh, Oberheim DX drum machine. Look at this. That is such a beautiful machine. Uh, the This is basically the update to the Oberheim DMX drum machine, which had more sounds, uh, but this has some really cool capabilities, such as the ability 
to not open the drum machine up and get to the tuning knobs directly, which is great. Uh, again, I had wood walnut wood side panels made for this. There are a couple of companies online uh, that you can order uh, wood side panels for these old beasts, individual outputs. And very important is this one has MIDI. So the DX came out in two versions. Again, this is an 8-bit machine. Uh, so it came out originally in, I believe it was, let me think here, um, 1982 was the first ones. And then I think 83 they came out, or 83 or 84, they came out with the MIDI. And the way you know if it has MIDI on it is uh, this part right here. So if you're going to buy one of these, and these are a bit more expensive, anywhere from $800 to $1,000 usually, uh, you want one with a MIDI on it. Trust me, you want one with MIDI on it. Because um, at the very least, even if you don't access the sounds via MIDI, uh, MIDI control from the note numbers, uh, you can at least sync it easily. This is the, pretty much the first drum machine that I could afford in the 90s. Uh, it's 16-bit. Everybody was into it because it was 16-bit and it sounded, had really good sounds in it uh, for the time. And uh, a great sequencer and velocity sensitive pads and uh, a manual right in it. So you never lose your manual. Um, and uh, a couple of individual outputs here MIDI and um, individual outputs. So again, this is 16 bit. And from 98, the MC505. Uh, I really like this. It's got some really beefy sounds. It's been used by all sorts of people. It also has some great uh, D-beam controller here and a pattern sequencer and everything in it. Uh, so I like the TR-909 sounds in this, actually. And if you can't afford an actual TR-909, or if you don't want to go with one of the new Roland Boutique series, uh, that's a good option. They make the MC-303 and the MC-505, the MC-303 being this smaller. I also have a Roland R8M, and uh, that's my... That also takes cards, and it has some great TR-808 sounds and 909 sounds in it, and that was from the early 90s as well. So a good high-quality R8, the actual physical drum machine, will cost you maybe about $300. Uh, and this one, usually you can pick them up for about $100. And uh, so there's no drum pads on them, and there's no drum sequences in them, but you can access them via MIDI. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, since those are all sampled drum machines, the other thing I want to talk about are analog drum machines. And there's a lot of great analog drum machines out there. Some really nice ones, a lot of uh, updates to analog drum machines. The classic, and I'll try and put some pictures in here as I'm going along. The classic one is the uh, TR-606, which is the, actually, that actually was the first analog drum machine that I ever owned. Uh, I got that when I was in my teen years and had a lot of fun hanging out in my bedroom uh, programming the TR-606, or the Dramatics. It was called the Dramatics, the 606, the Roland 606. And I decided not to replace that drum machine because they're really old now. I think they came out in 83 and they, uh, the, the quality on them you know, they're kind of falling apart. You can get a good one, but they, they're expensive. They're like $550 approximately. Um, they go all the way up to $650, depending on the quality, depending on whether there's a case there. So I found myself a little replacement um, for about $100. Bucks. You can get these these range from $50 to it's about $150. It's called the Boss. It's called the Boss DR110. And it's pretty nice. It's a, it's a nice actual replacement for the 606. Albeit, I know, I know, it doesn't sound exactly the same, but it's analog and it's fun and you can program beats in it and it's from 1983 uh, and uh, it has a battery pack in it. So this one only has uh, one monophonic output, so no individual outputs on it and uh, you got to put a, uh, an adapter in there. A nine volt adapter, though it does run on batteries, which is nice, um, and it does not have MIDI. So of this time period, it does not have MIDI. So I pretty much will program a beat, sample it, put it into my whatever I'm working on. So to replace, because I do like the TR six hundred six sound, that old analog drum machine, is I bought. 
this. The drum drone, the TT606. And this is amazing. I mean, it's about $300 and it has way more features than the original TR606. All of these little patterns light up. You got drum selectors and drum tones up here. You've got individual outputs on the back. Uh, and uh, so quarter inch main output, individual outputs are on um, eighth inch jack and uh, the ever important MIDI. So you can totally access this via your DAW program, which unfortunately is what I'm stuck doing with this right now because for some reason, the selector switch on here, this thing stopped working. It no longer selects drums. Um, and uh, I've contacted the company several times. I've sent them emails in English and in French, and they will not respond to me. I don't know why. They're just ignoring all my emails. And to, to find out, you know, what the deal is with this, is if this is a known issue, I don't know. Um, because this thing sounds amazing. It sounds really good. Uh, and so right now I'm just accessing it via MIDI because it still works fine via MIDI, but I can't program the beats on it itself. So let's talk about what you're looking for when you want to buy a drum machine. First off, know what you're buying, as in do the research on the drum machine. Uh, do you want, for example, like that Korg DDD1 or with the sampling option in it, which is pretty cool, but it's, it's really a short sampling option, uh, short sampling time. Or do you want the DDD5, which you can pick up really cheap uh, for, you know, 50 bucks, 80 bucks, maybe $100 max. And when you are buying a drum machine, you wanna make sure that the it's not beat up. I mean, I'm a collector, so when I do pick these up, which I'm actually pretty much done picking these up, uh, is that I make sure that it is in really great shape, that it hasn't had a rough life. So make sure that it doesn't have scratches, that the labels aren't worn off here, uh, that the knobs and buttons are working. A couple things that you're going to have to deal with on these old machines is you will need to replace the battery because the batteries wear out. It will still work oftentimes, even if the battery's dead, but you need to get that battery out because the battery will leak. And if it leaks onto the circuit board, then the machine's probably shot. So uh, if you can't replace the battery yourself, uh, find a tech, you know, it doesn't cost that much usually to replace the battery. And once the battery is replaced, it will remember your settings, it will remember your sequences, and that obviously is key if you want to actually program the machine from itself, from itself as opposed to just having uh, MIDI cables coming in and program it from your DAW program. But even if you're programming it from your DAW program, you're still going to want to be able to have it remember the settings, such as your pan settings or your level settings or your pitch tuning, like that uh, the Roland TR626 has internally can save its pitch settings for each of the drums. So if I'm working on a song, I want to make sure that uh, those pitches are saved in there so I don't have to retune the drums every time I turn it on uh, before eventually I will track it into my song. But while I'm working with it uh, as a virtual instrument or as a virtual hardware instrument, I want to make sure that uh, it saves its settings. So uh, that's something pretty typical that you'll need to deal with is changing the battery. Uh, one thing that you know, this seems kind of obvious, but when you pick up a drum machine, uh, make sure that it has the right power supply and then turns on and the power switch works. Uh, this is a backup um, sequential circuits tom that I got. Uh, you see, it, it has a dent in here. So like what happened to it when it got that dent there? You see that dent? There it is, there's the dent. No, it was dropped, so you're gonna wanna make sure that the connections are okay back here. Uh, and, um, that it has all its screws. And you can look at this one. This one, it has, there's, this screw is missing. So that usually indicates that it's been opened up and something was done to it inside. Uh, so check to make sure it has all its screws and check to make sure that the screws aren't rusted out. Like, you see that? Yeah. So that's a very rusty screw. That indicates to me that either this is a really bad screw or uh, it's, it's, uh, it's been exposed to um, the elements and something's rusted. So that's not cool. Like I said, make sure it has the right 
power supply. The first time I bought one of these, didn't have the right power supply, so it was pretty much a brick. And some power supplies are really weird. This is a weird one from Sequential. Replacing these power supplies costs anywhere from $50 to $100. Uh, it has a multi-pin. Uh, where is it? it has a multi-pin part that goes into the drum machine itself, which is just, that's, that's crazy. Um, you know, it's not just some simple 9 volt, it's like a 12 volt battery uh, wall ward. So this is a really weird one. If you buy a Tom, make sure it's got the right battery supply. Um, you can buy them online, you can buy them through eBay, and there's a company uh, in Sonoma Valley uh, that sells these. I will list the name somewhere around here, up here in the corner here. Um, and also that the power supply is the right power supply and at least has the right power connection. So this is the one for the Alesis. And so it's not a normal 9 volt, it's this weird pin thing for the Alesis. Alesis did this on all their drum machines and their reverb units. And somebody took this one and used some painter's tape to splice it together. Probably not the best connection. I've talked about that before. You can get some shrink wrap and, a, and a, you get some shrink wrap and um, electrical shrink wrap and, and make your a better connection. But I'll probably replace this one, but it, it works. And also make sure that, of course, it's the right voltage and right milliamps. Because I love MIDI. I want to make sure that uh, my drum machines personally have MIDI in them. And usually they do. This one has MIDI in it. And I said you can replace the ends. So these are these weird plastic ends on here. And I have a guy up in San Jose who does, um, does the ends. Or you can make them yourself. Here's a couple of homemade ones. Um, they're not as nice as the, the finely crafted ones I've bought from this expert woodworker, but they get the job done and they look kind of rough and tumble. They're kind of cool. 8-bit samples sound really cool, I think. Uh, really dirty and grungy and punchy in terms of the DX. Uh, the Tom also sounds, has a lot of character. It has so much character, the 8-bit sounds. The 12-bit sounds also have a lot of character. Um, and then when you get up to the 16-bit sounds like this Alesis here, at least this year, it's, it's uh, starting to get more pristine, but it still sounds, uh, it's, it's still fun to work with. But I definitely like the 12 bits and the 8 bit sounds. So the analog drum machines tend to cost more money. Uh, if I, I should probably run over the prices on all these as well. So right now on the current used market, the MC505, depending on the quality, uh, will range from about 200 to 300. Uh, again, if you're a collector and you want something in really great shape, it's going to cost you more money uh, if it's in pristine condition. Uh, these Alesis HR16s are a lot of fun to learn and they are very inexpensive uh, starting around 80 and going up to maybe 150. Uh, there are two versions. There's the HR16, the gray one here, the HR16, and then there's also the HR16B, which is cool because it's black. Uh, but it has different sound set in it. A lot of these drum machines, too, have mods that are available on eBay, which means that you can pick up a new LCD screen, a uh, backlit, backlit LED screen, or uh, you can um, add some different sounds to it. That's pretty cool. The, the Yamaha RX-5 goes for around 200 bucks, give or take about $50, depending on the quality of the RX-5. The RX-7 is about the same price, around $200. The Tom um, really varies uh, depending on whether it comes with carts, depending on the quality, depending on whether it has that $100 power supply. So it can go all the way down to as little as maybe $500 if it's totally trash, uh, to as much as $800 uh, if it's in really great condition with a bunch of carts, cartridges. And the 626... Um, is usually less expensive than the 707 and starts, oh, I'd say around $200 usually. And I've already mentioned the DD5. Um, I guess I should conclude by saying, why would I want a drum machine when I've got all these great sounds and samples inside of my DAW program, whether it's Ableton Live or Reason? 
and some really great ways of programming it. Personally, for me, um, there are two reasons. One, um, it's a little bit of nostalgia. Definitely there's that. Uh, and two, I like programming the beats uh, on the drum machines themselves. They have a unique sound and a unique groove and a unique feel about them. Uh, there have been uh, other YouTubers that have done direct comparisons between some of the analog hardware, uh, or I should say the physical hardware, because it's not always analog, but the physical hardware, uh, and a software program, and the software programs sound fantastic. They do not sound the same. They sound great. They do not sound the same. These old classic beasts have their own personality and their own grunginess. And now that we can record them at really high sample rates, uh, like uh, you know the standard of 24-bit, 32-bit, uh, 48-kilohertz, um, I usually work at 24, 48, generally speaking. Um, they just sound, they sound really good. Uh, and they're not inside of the computer. So they're not coming out of your computer's digital to analog converters. Rather, they have their own digital analog converters, and that's imparting a sound. And this is a 12-bit digital analog converter, this one that I'm pointing to right here, which is the RX-5, or an 8-bit one. Uh, and so, you know, they sound really unique. And I like to just MIDI them in, and I actually like to program things directly inside of the computer a lot, and then once I've programmed my entire MIDI track, then I'll plug these in, I'll take the individual outputs, and I'll, I'll track it. And uh, doing a side-by-side -side comparison, there are things that happen inside of this machine that are not perfect the way a computer outputs the sound. This has a lot of little, it has little timing discrepancies, it has a little uh, sort of glitchiness in the sound that happens, and that all adds a bit of personality to the track. It's not as sterile. That's the best way I can put it. The computer definitely, even as great as it sounds, it, it definitely has a more of a sterile uh, sound about it. So, so that's it. If you're looking for a drum machine, I hope that this has helped you. And again, if you have questions about it, feel free to post some comments and we can get a thread going about what drum machines are cool, which ones are a waste of time. Uh, and you really do need to do your research. I don't expect people to buy that many drum machines. Buy If you buy one, if you buy two, uh, you want them to do your research so that you get something that you're really going to enjoy and you're really going to use. Now, mind you, I don't use these all the time, but I know what they sound like. So I'm like, hey, I know this song would be perfect for this drum machine, so I'll pull it out, I'll work with it, I'll track it, record it, and then I'll pack it back up and put it away for another couple months until I'm ready to use it again. So have fun, and I look forward to uh, seeing what you guys are using for drum machines, classic analog drum machines, or even the new drum machines. See ya.